Hi guys and welcome back to the Tactic YouTube channel again. Today we are going to take a closer look of the brand new Noctua NHD15, a successor that replaces the current very famous brother of it, the NHD14, and that is even mentioned on the box. Every true computer enthusiast is going to be excited about this product, bearing in mind how the NHD14 performs, this can only be better or as good as. Taking a closer look from outside, you can notice that this is your basic Noctua packaging, very clean and professional looking, but this time it came in a slightly bigger box than usual. Of course, some basic features are laid out on the front of the box, like the 6th heat pipe dual tower design, 2 NFA15 140mm fan, better fan compatibility, better RAM compatibility, secure film 2 mounting system and so on. On the back of the box you'll find some more technical features, ones which occur again from the front of the box and one very interesting, like the long 6 year warranty. On the side of the box there's a fan specifications for the NFA15 fans, in case you're wondering about that, and the layout pictures with the dimensions of the CPU tower itself. Let's open up this giant box. Right from the start we come across with mounting system boxes, both for Intel and AMD, alongside of the accessories box. Here is the additional NFA15 fan. And here's the cooler, neatly packed inside the separate box, which is a specific thing for Noctua that was passed through from the former NHD14 and you won't see this with their other models of coolers. And of course, the star of our show, the new NHD15. The cooler itself pretty much resembles its predecessor, but there are some key features that take them apart from each other. Size-wise, the new NHD15 is a bit bigger in dimensions than the D14, 5mm higher and deeper, and 10mm wider. With that, the net weight got to exactly 1000 grams, and the curb weight with the fans went to 1320 grams. The overall fin design changed quite a bit, with a main assignment to lower down the turbulence and help with the thermal efficiency. They are directed more toward the center of the cooler to help minimizing the inefficient airflow caused by the center fan hub. Side fins are curved so the airflow is more direct on the center point of the cooler. The biggest visual change is definitely the cutout portion of the bottom part of the cooler for better ramp clearance for up to 64mm in height for a single fan mode and up to 32mm in a dual fan mode. We will talk about that more later. From the top point of view you can see the heat pipes which are coming out from the bottom part of the cooler. In total there are 6 of them making a U shape and coming from one side of the tower to another going through the CPU base in the process. You can see them running through the fins by looking at the fins. Also you can observe those fin design changes that we talked about earlier in the video. As we said, those 6 heat pipes end up exchanging heat on the nickel plated CPU base that measures 40 by 38 mm in surface dimensions. The overall finish of the CPU base is pretty decent, not completely mirror-like, but it gets the job done as you will see afterwards. The second NFA15 PWVM fan comes in a separate package with a pretty short cable, but we like that approach since it doesn't need to be longer than that because it's quite close to the CPU motherboard fan header. Noctua finally made the fan header connectors completely back, as well as entirely sleeved up the cables also in black. You can install the second fan by getting the additional clamp for the fan from the accessories box, and since we're already here, we can show you the rest of the accessories. You can see here the H1 thermal face, a very long screwdriver for easier approach, split cables, two low noise adapters, Noctua badge, some screws and rubber dampering mounts. Installation of the second fan is pretty simple and straightforward, and as you probably already noticed, the NHD15 implements two 140mm fans, while the D14 came with an older model of NFP12 120mm and its bigger brother 140mm the NFP14 fan. As we already talked about this on the beginning of the video, the NHD15 also uses the Secure Film 2 mounting installation system. For AMD that's a complete no-brainer with few screws and a holding plates, as well as for Intel with same amount of parts but with additional back plate that goes on the back of the motherboards in case of the LGA 1150X sockets. For our 2011 socket we didn't have to use any of this as it has mounting holes on the socket Plus, we already had an NH-U12 installed from before, so we just had to pull it off and put the NH-D15 on. And this is a reminder why you need to clean your cooler often, especially if you have an open testbed. 
One thing though, the holding bracket are a bit different in holes. The NHU12S cooler and its NMTMB3 holding bracket is different than the NMTMB2 from the NHD15 cooler, so we had to change them up. That's a minute or two time consumer, nothing too complicated as you can see. We put our Arctic Silver 5 thermal paste on our Core i7-3970X Extreme processor. This thermal paste goes on par with the Noctua's NTH1, but needs a little bit of breaking time, so we reckon that it could have a degree or two difference at max. After that, we had to pull off the middle fan, so we can get access to the screws and pin down the cooler to the socket. Almost over with the installation, putting the cooler down on the socket, sparing the paste a little bit, and aligning the holes. Lefty loosey, righty tidy, going few times back and forth screwing down the cooler evenly on both sides. As you can see there's plenty of room for the RAM, even for tall Trident X, but once you get to the dual fan configuration, that space gets tight very quick. You can see here how the outer fan is touching the Trident X RAM, which isn't that big of a problem, not for us, but it can definitely dictate how low the outer fan can go. We use the Noctua split cable to connect both fans onto the one CPU header on the motherboard. Of course, after that the only thing that needs to be done is to power up the rig and test out the performance of the NHD15 cooler. Look at its spin, so amazed and much beauty. The room temperature was exactly 21 Celsius degrees, so bear in mind that when looking at the results. We start off with the stock values for our 3970X and idle temperatures. Nothing unexpected happened here, the NHD15 is better than the NHU12S for a couple of degrees. In this case, while idling, both of fans are working at very low and almost inaudible 550 RPMs. Going to the Prime 95 low testing, the core temperatures are as low as 63 to 64 Celsius degrees for some cores and up to 70 to 72 Celsius degrees for the hottest ones. All that performance while staying quiet at around 930 RPMs for both fans. Coming down to the performance under overclocked settings for the processor, we went to the 1.35V and 4.5GHz for our test purposes. As you can see, hardware monitor was showing 1.411V, so we were definitely somewhere between those voltages. In this case, the performance of the cooler was still pristine, even better from some closed loop water cooling options. We skipped the idle testing and went right to the measurements under load. 3 cores were below 70 Celsius degree mark, 2 cores just above that mark and 1 core roaming around 75 to 77 Celsius degrees. Very impressive, especially considering still almost inaudible fan work, which you can check and hear for yourself in this video clip. Noctua once again showed us they didn't have the word compromise in their dictionary when it comes to performance or anything else for that matter. Thank you guys once again for checking out our unboxing and review of the Noctua NHD15 CPU cooler. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up if you liked our video, leave a comment if you have any questions about the product and of course subscribe to our TechTik YouTube channel for more content like this or you can just check out our other video unboxings from before.